Hey guys, Jay here, welcome to Yon's Battle, and today I would like to talk to you about paint and how to keep paint wet and workable until the end of time. One of the things you're gonna need in this hobby is paint. You need paint, but it can be a cruel mistress. Paint can dry out, the pigment can settle and harden, you can spill it, it can get lost, and you need to store it. Paint should last you years, but it depends. When was the paint made? How old was it when you bought it? How was it stored? What climate was it stored in? Humidity? Temperature? Was it too hot? Was it too cold? There are a hundred things that could go wrong with your paint. The best offense is offense. Plan to use it up before it can go bad. It can be nice to have a huge hoard of paint, gallons worth, sitting in perfectly laser cut rows, or filling fun Lazy Susan storage carousels, or hanging on the wall in upright nail polish organizers. But really, we don't want to look at our paint, we want to paint with our paint. I paint like a fiend, and I store all the paint I own in two plastic totes I bought from the hardware store. I don't need anything nice or fancy, because when I want to spend nice and fancy, I want to do it on some models, not their paint. Although both are colorful, paint is not Legos. Nearly indestructible plastic blocks that can be passed on from generation to generation, paint has a shelf life, and you're probably the final owner. Even dropper bottles aren't the answer. Sometimes these can go bad too. Some paint containers are better than others, and everyone has a preference. So to recap, paint is great, but don't overthink it. Paint is just a means to get things painted. <laughs> This tip might seem like blasphemy, but hear me out. It's a simple idea to keep you painting and not paying. Only own the paints you need. Sounds crazy, right? But Jay, how do I know what I need? What if I need it and don't have it? If I don't have a green, blue, gray, how will I finish this model? It can seem reasonable to buy up tons of colors of paint right away, but try and hold off. The logic here is that if you own too much paint, you cannot treat every color with the love it deserves. One trick is to not buy paint sets. One is probably a good idea to get you started, but move on from there. The sets aimed at beginners are a good deal, but having the same color from different manufacturers is almost certainly going to mean one gets wasted. The trouble of owning so much paint is that it becomes a real chore to keep an eye on them all. And if you're worried that a color will dry out on the shelf, shouldn't the real question be, why do I own this color that I never ever use? If you already own the main colors, you technically own all the colors. Mix and match to test a paint scheme, and then when you're set, you can rock up to your friendly local game store, or queue up an Amazon tab and order the paints that you know you will use. I'm not trying to scare you away from buying paint. If you get in as deep as me, you will own a lot of it. Just keep it reasonable. If you want to try out different brands, you can experiment as you use up colors. Don't like a yellow? Try a different one. Don't like the new one? Get a new new one, and so on. New paints and colors take time to learn, and if you jump ship too soon, you might not make discoveries that you would have made by muscling through. Maybe this is a poor coverage yellow, but can make a nice glaze. Maybe this is a sucky white, but it's good for leveling your couch. As I have progressed as a painter, I have moved from paint to paint. My Necrons are painted with GW paints. For my Black Templar, I used Vallejo. And for my Orcs, I used every color under the evil suns. With all that said, don't be a hoarder, and don't be a collector of paint either. Make sure that your paint matches your needs, and not exceeds it. Buy too much. Paint comes in all shapes and sizes, and these bigger containers seem to do a great job of keeping paint fresh, so I'm going to focus on the little guys. Droppers and pots. Finally, let's get to the nitty gritty, how to keep your paints alive. First, let's look at paint in pots. A few companies still use pots, Privateer Press's P3 range, Cote de Arms, and of course, Games Workshop. Why does Games Workshop still use pots? There are some conspiracies that Games Workshop keeps making their pots worse and worse because, secretly, they want more paint waste and dried out paint to force people to spend more money. Maybe, but I don't know. I tend to think that flip top pots are just more accessible for beginners. A palette can be intimidating to a brand new painter, and it's simpler to skip it altogether and go straight from pot to model. 
and I actually prefer the pots for things like Null Noil and Ergrex Earthshade washes, and Games Workshop's newish contrast paints, where I usually am going straight from pot to model. Paint pots have a bad rap, and it's mostly deserved. One thing that is often said is that you waste paint taking Games Workshop paint from the pot to your palette. I don't think this one is as true as people make it out to be. Yes, there is some wastage, but it's the same wastage painters get every single time you clean your brush. So, yes, but actually no. And if you grab paint with the back of a brush and roll it carefully on your palette, you will waste almost nothing. See, is that really enough paint to get upset over? Another common complaint is that you have to use up the paint from pots fast, or else they'll dry out. This one can be true. Can be. Pots have a lot of problems that can lead to them letting air into the paint. But if you're careful, your potted paint should have a long, full life. If you don't touch a paint for years, then who knows what will happen? You should give your paints a shake often and see if they need a little thinner to keep them fresh. What is true is that Games Workshop pots do need more maintenance than droppers to keep them working. With that said, the new Games Workshop pots really kinda suck. I prefer the older ones that had a much shallower lid and was made of a slightly softer rubber, but Games Workshop and their infinite wisdom decided to change, so here we are. These pots have little tongues in them meant to funnel the paint from the cap back down into the pot. But this little tongue will often let paint roll down the back and into the seal. The paint buildup can prevent a nice seal and let air in. To keep these pots nice, it's important to not let paint get into the seal. First things first, when taking paint from the Games Workshop pot, try not to let it open up all the way. This should keep the paint from dripping into the seal. Take what you need and then close the pot. If a pot is giving you problems, you can try cutting off the tongue. Often when the paint is thick, it likes to cling to the tongue, then flow back onto the cap, so removing it will keep this from happening. While you have your paint open, you can remove any dried paint around the cap. And you can look at the consistency of the paint and decide if it needs thinner or not. If it's a little thick, it probably needs some water or acrylic paint thinner. Periodically, you should be looking at your potted paint to check if they need a drink. If you take care of your pots, they should never go bad on you. Dropper paints are much more forgiving than potted paints in regards to maintenance, but they can still develop problems. Myth! Dropper bottles always keep paint fresh. Fact! Dropper bottles are great! They are my favorite paint containers, and is part of the reason why I love Vallejo paint so much. Ah, <sighs> so much. But nothing is perfect and droppers are no exception. Paint can always separate and I would suggest putting some kind of agitator in your bottles, just like you would do with a pot. I would suggest a nice rock. But Jay, what about the mineral composition of rocks? It can react with the paint. It will be ruined. Sure, it can happen, but really, you can look at a rock and be able to guess if it will happen or not. These are probably fine, this one, no. Droppers might not let the paint dry out, but it can still dry on the tip. To fix this, you can carefully push out any dried paint from the back of the applicator with a pin or paperclip. Or if it's only a little clog, just give a good squeeze and usually the clog will be pushed out with the paint. But in the wise words of Jedi Master Qui-Gon Jinn, whenever you gamble my friend, eventually you will lose. Also, dropper bottles are not a precision instrument and can develop defects. Sometimes a dropper will squeeze out some paint when you screw the cap back on and make a mess. This is usually no big deal, but if you want to put your paint into an airbrush, you should try and keep this area paint free. You can fix this by making a better seal with a cap and dropper. First, you have to clean the cap and dropper with some warm water and dry it with a paper towel. Next, you need some craft foam and a hole punch. Punch out some foam and put the circle into the cap. Now the dropper should have a nice tight seal. Do this to your droppers and they should be perfect forever. So with that said, go yonder my children, check your paints and find that lonely color and see if he needs anything. Who knows, you might just find your new favorite color. Well wasn't that fun? I hope you guys enjoyed the video and as always, thanks for watching.